بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين my brothers my sisters I was going to speak about something but what I have decided to do after listening to Sheikh Hamza's recitation is to bring in from what he recited beautiful powerful reminders of Allah I am a person who does not believe in coincidence for Allah there is no coincidence for Allah for you and I there might be coincidence for Allah it's not considered coincidence he plans things you are here yes because you made a little effort to be here but Allah wanted you to be here who I sit next to what happens who I interact with the person I pass the things that happen everything is designed by Allah for the purpose that he has chosen when he made you and I, he told us, I made you to test you. And people think that's a joke. Sometimes, astaghfirullah, those who don't have faith, don't realize, they say, why would Allah create me to test me? Everything that ever happens in your life is a challenge from Allah. He wants to see what you do about it. What you do about the situations he puts you in. What you do about the conditions that he has chosen for you, what you do about the opportunities he has thrown in front of you, what you do about the difficulties, the hardship and so on. So I'm going to get to that. But the verses read, he started off, O oh people, ya ayyuhan nas, O oh people. This is a verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing all people. Qad rabbikum. Allah is describing revelation. The Quran in particular, and Allah is saying, O oh people, a maw'idha, a reminder, a strong reminder has come to you from your Lord. Reminder about what? About everything. Whatever you want to know, it is in the Quran. Allah says, a reminder has come to you from your Lord, maw'idha tum min rabbikum. And in it, shifa'un lima fi sudur. There is cure for that which is in the chest. That which, is, which lies within your rib cage. What is in there? What is in my chest? My heart, primarily. What is the heart all about? The heart has two different aspects to it. The physical and the spiritual. The physical, your medical or whatever else can be diagnosed through a blood test. That blood must flow through the heart in order to be pumped around your entire body. So if ever you would like to know what's wrong, one of the first things the doctors will tell you is do a blood test. You do the blood test and then they talk. What was that all about? It was the heart. Allah says the heart is the seat of the entire body. Behold, in the, in the body there is a piece of flesh. If it is pure and good, the entire body will be pure and good. And if it is not pure and good, if it is diseased and sick, the entire body will be diseased and sick. Indeed, that piece of flesh is the heart. If that's the words of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it is true in every sense, whether it is a physical malady or a spiritual malady. You have jealousy, you have a disease. It's a disease of the heart. You rectify the heart, you remedy your jealousy, you live a happier life. If you have jealousy and you really do not remedy it, your life will not be of a quality that you deserve or a quality that Allah wants you to have. Same applies. You have a physical malady, you tested your blood, you saw what was wrong, you remedy it. If you are short of zinc or magnesium or vitamin D, you'd better do something about it on a daily basis. If you, are, if you have too much of something, you do something about it. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to lead a quality of life that Allah wants you to lead. Because you just don't care. So look after yourselves both physically as well as spiritually. These spiritual diseases of malice of envy, of jealousy, of hatred, and so on. All these need to be remedied. Just like when you have a vitamin D deficiency, they'll give you calcium and vitamin D. And they will tell you what to do and what not to do. And when to have it and how to have it. Because you would like to be having more or better physical health, you take it seriously. We should be taking our spiritual well-being even more seriously. My brothers, my sisters, the Quran is telling us, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is warning us about this piece of flesh known as the heart. 
The heart is in the chest, in the rib cage. It's protected by Allah. It's protected physically. And Allah says, we would like you to protect it spiritually as well. And we want you to know we have revealed the remedy for anything that may come in your direction. What is it? That's the verse. O people, a reminder has come to you from your Lord and in it there is cure for your heart. For your heart meaning that which is in your chest. Wahudan. And in it there is guidance and mercy for those who believe. If you believe in it and you work towards it, there is guidance and mercy. You will be content, you will be happy. Contentment and happiness only come about with discipline, my brothers and sisters. You don't achieve at your school that you attended or are attending right now unless you're disciplined. You won't achieve a salary at the end of the month at the workplace you're working unless you're disciplined. With discipline you achieve similarly in religion and in yourself and your own contentment and your growth and your spirituality. Without discipline there is no chance that you're going to achieve what you're meant to be achieving. That's why Allah has spread out the five daily prayers the timings are uniquely designed by Allah for your betterment and mine. If you're not interested in them, well, what do you expect to achieve? When Allah makes something compulsory for us, I promise you, it is only because He wants to save us from a lot of negativity and He wants us to be thriving in positivity. There's no other reason, subhanAllah. He wants us to succeed in this world and the next. Why do you think Allah says, there is nothing more loved to me that you could ever do than those things I've made compulsory. That's a hadith Qudsi. Hadith Qudsi meaning the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said to us, Allah has said that there is nothing more beloved that you could do or no deed more beloved to him than that which he made compulsory upon you. He would not have made it compulsory if he didn't love it the most. That's why the five daily prayers, they say, you don't want to do them. Can you call yourself a Muslim? Question, right? Can you? I, that's the pillar of Islam. Allah's kept it a pillar. To give a charity, to give out some of your money that is so dear to you. You look at it and the first thing you can see is, wow. You see this 50 quid that I've got in my hand. It's not 50 quid. It's a box of MAC powder, mashallah. That's what it is, mashallah. Things go across your mind. Sorry, just an example. My sisters, my brothers, you know, I'm just giving an example. Maybe I should give an example for the brothers, right? But they use makeup too nowadays. So, astaghfirullah. May Allah protect us, mashallah. Guys are laughing, mashallah. So, my brothers and sisters, when we get money, we think of things we want. But do we think Allah has made it compulsory for you to divorce yourself a little bit from the wealth? in terms of limiting your love for it. Why is zakat compulsory? Do you really think that Allah was unable to provide for the poor? He created them for a reason. He knows He wants them to be there so that He can test the others. Allah says in the Quran, we have intentionally kept people on different levels of sustenance so that some can reach out to the others. They are not going to decide, listen, you know what, take my place and I take yours. That's not going to happen, but at least a little bit of it. Do not love your wealth more than you love reaching out to those who don't have because loving your wealth on its own will not be able to attain for you any righteousness. But Allah says, you will never achieve true righteousness until and unless you spend from that which you love. So Allah's created scenarios and situations where He's telling you, I know you've budgeted to do something, it's a luxury. Here there is a desperate need. Are you prepared two pounds, two and a half pounds of every hundred to give it out? I have made it complete compulsory for you because I love it. When you reach out, it's going to help you. It's going to make you focus on the right things. It's going to make you not love wealth to the degree that you do something prohibited to achieve it. The way wealth is marketed today and materialism across the globe, people would do anything to earn, whether it's legal or illegal, becomes besides the point to some people. They don't mind. I made millions. How? Don't ask me. Astaghfirullah. Allah says, wait, 
The earning must be pure. The spending is pure. But I want to share with you something that makes me cry. Allah will never accept your wealth for a good cause if it was earned in a bad and evil way. So you might be wondering, I'm not going to give to these guys. I'm not going to give to that cause. I'm not going to do this. The causes of goodness will continue without you. Perhaps it's the filth of your heart that has caused you not to want to give because Allah didn't want your wealth to contaminate such a beautiful, pure cause. I don't know if you got what I just said. That's also taken from the Prophet Muhammad wasallam that Allah accepts your contributions. When you see a poor person, you, you actually look at them and you should feel privileged to know someone who is so needy so that you can give. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. It's an honor that this thing came across me that someone needs. Someone needs. Do you know I come from a country where there are a lot of people who beg because obviously their poverty levels are different. But even in this country, there are people who beg. I've seen them with my own eyes. Now, begging is not something noble. You and I know it's a last resort. Do you know what shaitan does to us? You see a beggar begging. The first thing that crosses a lot of minds, astaghfirullah, partly including mine sometimes, I'm a human being, is, you know what, this is a scam. These guys are part of a big syndicate. These guys, yes, we don't want to encourage it. Yes, we will not encourage it. But Allah tells you in the Quran, you don't need to give. If you, don't, if you feel like you don't want to, you don't have to. But do not belittle the person. You don't know them. Thank you. That's all we're saying. Did you hear what I said? You don't have to say, hey, put your window down and say, go get a job. Give him a job. Give her a job. What did you just say? You belittle someone. Why are you begging? There's nothing wrong with you. Hang on. If you don't want to give, Smile at the guy and walk away without giving a penny. You have a right if your heart is not inclined towards it, so what? But you don't have a right to insult someone. Don't belittle them. They could just be genuine and they could be so close to the Almighty and you don't know. Be careful. That's what Allah is saying. So the diseases of the heart, that's where they stem from. Love of this worldly life. Love, selfishness. I want things for myself only. I don't want to share what I have with anyone and everyone. I don't want to, not at all. I saw, I had pre-recorded this Ramadan series known as Reconnecting with Revelation. And this evening I saw the one that says, being selfless and sharing things. Subhanallah, you have to share. It's about the ant. And I spoke about how everyone wants goodness only for themselves and no one else. But Islam tells you, when you share it, you achieve righteousness. Because your time on earth is very temporary. It's short. How long are you going to be here for? I promise you just a few more days, to be honest. You can count the days. If it's 10 years with 360 days, for example, 365 days, what's that? Multiplied by 10 is 3,000 and something days. It's minor. It's small. If it's 20, it's 6,000 and something days. You have 10,000 days left. If someone told you that, what would you say? Say, stop counting in days. Just give me the years. A big deal. It's the same thing. May Allah help us. So we are going back to Allah. We're happy to be going back to Allah with a little bit of preparation. How do you prepare? Allah sends you the beauty in the Quran and he tells you, we have sent you something that will cleanse your heart. You want to follow? Here's rules. Here's regulations. It's going to be discipline. Yes, but follow it. Try your best. You are a human. We know that you are a human being. We know the challenges. We know the pressures of society. Keep on trying to be a better person every day. Every day. In whatever Allah makes easy for you. Now, the problem with man. Allah made it easy for me to dress this way, to grow my beard, perhaps to have whatever, you know, and so on. I, you look at someone and you can see this person looks religious. Well, Allah made it easy for them to deal with their externals, perhaps. Maybe not their internal selves. Maybe not their character. You have so many people who look religious, but they may be struggling internally with bad habits, addictions, so many other things. So people say, well, who's a better person? I promise you in the eyes of Allah, you will never ever know. Never ever know. Some people might not be struggling so much with the internals. They might not have those addictions. They might have a level of piety, but they may be struggling with the external appearance. It's possible. It does happen due to different pressures, due to family, due to whatever environment they may be living in, whatever else it may be. It has happened, it will happen, and it does happen. My brothers, my sisters, learn to help one another. That is Allah's plan. He wants you to reach out to one another, even in the form of help and assistance. 
In this regard, today I'm here talking to you. I'm sharing my time. And subhanallah, I would like to hear from you too. To say, you know, my beloved brother, this, I'd like to tell you this or that. If possible, yes, why not? If you have a piece of guidance for me, I'd love to hear it. Because that's how we're going to get closer to Allah. That's how we're going to get closer to Allah. So Allah tells you, O oh people, this is what has come to you. This is the value of it. It has in it cure. It has in it hudan wa rahmah lil mu'mineen. It has in it guidance and mercy for the believers. May Allah strengthen our faith. And then towards the end of the verses, the verse read is, do not worry about what people say. Don't worry about what they are saying about you. Don't stress. Don't worry about what people say about you. You're doing the right thing. Whenever anyone does the right thing, a lot of people will have a lot to say. Sometimes including family. When I do the right thing, why are you doing this? Oh, this is very bad. Hang on. Allah says, don't worry about what they're saying. Don't let it disturb you. Don't let it stress you. In another place in the Quran, Allah Almighty says, we know that what they're saying is tightening your chest. Don't allow that to happen. How do you remedy it? Find yourself in worship often, in prostration often, and praise Allah until the day you meet Him. Develop a relationship with Allah primarily. That's important because all the other relationships are temporary. Your best friends sometimes leave you and you're shocked. We were buddies for 10 years. We lived in the same place. We couldn't move without each other. And today we don't even see each other. We wouldn't even, we've blocked each other on our phones. Has it not happened? It has. That's for Allah to show you these relationships are temporary on earth. But your relationship with Allah is everlasting. Your relationship with Allah is everlasting. So I thought I'd add a little bit of this because of the verses that were recited. And then I want to tell you what I had planned to say this evening is connected to the fact that Allah has blessed us by creating diversity. Diversity itself is a challenge and a test. Every one of us, even if you're siblings from the same mother, same father, and even if you're the greatest of lovers who love each other like crazy, you know, a house on fire. Do you know that you are created different? Everything about you is unique, completely. There will be no other person from Adam right to the end like you. Never. You are your own story. You are yourself. You have your own set of tests. Not a soul on earth has 100% what you have in your life. You are uniquely designed by Allah. Starting with your identity. Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem. Allah Almighty beautifully says, O oh man, what has deceived you? That you turn away from your own Lord. Your own Lord. What has deceived you against your own Lord, the one who created you, the one who fashioned you, gave you your form, your identity. The one who gave you your posture, your, you know, how tall or short you are, what is happening to you. How can you turn away from he who gave you all of this and you know that you got it from somewhere. We are believers, we have faith, but those who don't believe, we could ask them millions of questions. They would not have convincing answers. They haven't had to this day. We are too sophisticated as human beings to just say, you know what? Well, there's nothing more to this than just being on earth. And that's it. They said it from aforetime. And they're repeating it to this day. But no, we're too sophisticated. The feelings I have for you Everyone who's seated here and the 12,000, 10,000 we saw yesterday. It's impossible for me to sit and talk to you the way I want or the way you want. So I ask Allah, oh Allah, give me a day, some time or a time in Jannah where perhaps we could sit and fulfill that which we couldn't do here. This was temporary. 
It's, we are too sophisticated to just think, look, I wanted to get things done, but that's it, it's life, I'm going to end here. But I haven't ended yet. Why? Because there's unfinished business. So many things I've wanted to do, and I passionately need, I feel you're with your own children, you have children passing away, parents passing away, who haven't even been given the opportunity to spend time with one another. That's why we're taught when you've lost a child, the child will plead with Allah for you, that, oh Allah, you took this parent away from me and you didn't afford us the opportunity to spend time together. Now, I want you to give them paradise without reckoning so that we can spend the time here. Anyone who's lost a child, you know the feeling. No one can ever describe it. Like I said, it's unique. It's yours. It was a challenge for you. Nobody, no matter what they say, can ever soothe you besides Allah. Never. It can't happen. Even others who've lost their children in a similar fashion, their test is on a different level based on their own hearts and their own stories. May Allah grant us comfort. The most we could do is offer a, a good word and a prayer. There's nothing more you can do for someone who suffered a loss in that way. So my brothers and sisters, the diversity. You know, coming towards this particular place, I was thinking to myself, in life I've met hundreds of people or thousands of people. Everyone is unique. They have a character of their own. I need to adjust or they need to adjust or we both need to adjust. Every single person thinks differently. Your likes, dislikes, different. The way you want to do things, different. Your dressing, different. What you feel you should be doing and shouldn't be doing, different. Who made you? Allah. He made you unique. He made me too. I'm also unique. My test is how am I going to live on earth together with you in a way that we can try to inch closer to Allah as time passes. But we don't want to mess things up here on earth at the same time. I need to be able to adjust my life. You need to be able to adjust. The happiest of people are those who are prepared to adjust themselves and living with others who are also prepared to adjust. So we meet halfway. Or some things we meet this way, some things we meet that way, and that's how we get along. And then you say, I love this person, not because they're identical, because they get along with you. They understand you. They appreciate you. That's what it is. Never because they're the same. They're not the same. They're unique. They're different. Very different. But you have adjusted yourself to love the difference and to live with it and appreciate it. That's what it is. The minute you trample on someone else's toes and the minute you don't want to adjust a little bit here and there, trust me, that's the end of the relationship. Or it's going to suffer turbulence and turmoil because Allah's created us in a way that we need to adjust to others. We're all different, but... There are certain things that perhaps people choose not to compromise on. Like what? What are you not going to compromise on? Tell me. Tell me. Your faith. Do you agree? I believe. This belief of mine is a red line. Okay, so I believe. So what does Allah say? Allah says, oh you who disbelieve. I don't believe what you believe. You don't believe what I believe. I don't believe what you believe. And you don't believe what I believe. For you is your faith and for me is mine. Why? Why does it repeat itself so many times? Have you heard that? He could have said it once and it was closed. He repeated it again and again and again. For you is your faith, for me is mine. That certain things you have to just yours and mine. Here we go. We we disagree with other and we understand that what it is. Does it mean you're at war with people who disagree with you on those grounds? The answer is no, absolutely not. Wars happen for other reasons, reasons of oppression, reasons of whatever else it may be. But if there is an understanding and a beautiful uh, discussion and we, we want to learn from each other, we want to see what's going on. I don't know, for example, two people meet. On, on a street or somewhere else. And they get along, mashallah, very, very well until the discussion comes to religion. And someone says, I'm fasting. If the other says, that's nonsense. What do you think? How can you do that? It's so silly to just stay away from food and drink for what? And what do you achieve? Hang on. Don't just come to me and say that's nonsense. A better way of doing things is to say, explain this to me. I don't, un I don't quite understand it. And then talk. <laughs> that's... That's how we will get along with people. You don't understand sometimes what people of another faith do. Why do they do this? Sometimes it is absurd to you, but the way you word it needs to be. 
bearing in mind that you're living on earth together, you need to respect each other at least. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تَسُبُّ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّ اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Don't you dare scoff, mock at, or joke about, you know, belittle the, the deities being worshipped besides Allah. Because what will happen? As a result, they will start insulting Allah because of what you started. And they wouldn't have knowledge. That goes to show that even that which is considered absurd to someone, when you know that it's very, very close to their hearts, be careful how you speak about it. That's all Allah is saying. So I thought I'd speak about this diversity and how important it is to adjust, how important it is for all of us. And I know sometimes we're sitting, people will listen to this talk later as well, and they're going to think to ourselves, yes, well, that person needs to adjust. This man is right. No. I want to say each one of us, every single person, needs to ask himself, herself, how am I adjusting? How have I learned? What have I learned by communicating with different people? I don't need to change their entire lives to be able to get on with them. You know, the last thing, and I want to end with this. There are religious rulings and opinions regarding certain things. You know, you have the moon, you have the number of uh, units of taraweeh, you have uh, the issue of a cappellas, whether it's permissible or not, something that's not music, but it's made by the mouth, but meaning it's not uh, a musical instrument and so on. You have different religious opinions jurist in jurisprudence about all of this. You adopt what you firmly believe is correct. If someone else has adopted something legit that is on the other side, do you know what? You don't need to go to war with them for that because if it is for as long as there is some form of justification they have, they have from the Islamic circle, and I'm talking here about the Muslims, then let it be. You don't even need to debate it or argue about it. At the moment on the globe, we have far greater things to talk about than that. I have stopped the debate about how many units and how many. You can know what my opinion is. Here it goes. Or this is what I believe is correct. And stop there. We all know that other people believe differently. Look at the moon. The moon, you're never ever going to be able to get everybody to be on the same day. Because we are different. So what's the next best thing to do? Respect each other's opinions and enjoy two and three Eids. What is it? I know there were scholars who were upset when I said that. There is no other way out. No other way out. You have to respect that there is a difference of opinion. Some people look at the moon with telescopes and others say it must be a naked eye. You are not going to be able to bring them together. There will be a difference. The guys with the telescope will always see it first. So they're going to have Eid a day early. The guys who look at it with a naked eye may not be able to see it. By the way, this Eid, I'm quite certain, inshallah, by the will of Allah, the bulk of the globe is going to be having Eid on Monday. Inshallah. See that Inshallah covers me, right? Because if it's not, I'll tell you, but, but I said Inshallah. I have a feeling you guys, in this part of the world, we will have 30 fasts. That's my feeling. Meaning, those who started with Saudi Arabia, I think we're going to go to 30. Allah knows best. We're probably going to have Eid. Inshallah. It's Monday, I think I've calculated it right. And then, those who started a little bit later, they may have 29. But, if someone's had 28, they've got a problem. Because I, I have a feeling the moon's going to be visible quite easily. Allah knows best, but I'm just letting you know. So, we're not going to solve the matter. Enjoy it. I've actually spoken for five minutes more than my time. So, I think uh, because of iftar and we have limited time, I must end it just abruptly here. May Allah Almighty bless you all and inshallah, I pray that Allah accept all our fasting and our uh, taraweeh and all other ibadah, our giving and everything that we've done and will continue to do right up to the end of Ramadan, bearing in mind that the night of decree may still be coming. May Allah help us, inshallah, to witness that at least a few times in our lives. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.